How to increase security of WordPress sites. Hello and welcome. In this video session, I'm going to show you some of the methods that you can use for improving the security of your WordPress site. Now, there are many different plugins for securing your WordPress site, so you may like to simply search the plugin directory and add a security plugin. WordFence is popular, it's free to use, and the default settings are great for most setups. But once again, if you were to use WordFence, you end up having options whereby you can tweak it according to your setup. Next one is VaultPress. VaultPress allows you to have daily backups just in case something goes wrong. It is a paid plugin, but for a small fee, it may be worth it for you. A Kismet is another popular one for moderating your comments. There is another plugin called Clef to factor authentication. I think they're working with people behind WordPress. Basically use your smartphone to sign in to your WordPress site. It simply creates another security layer for logging in purposes. Also, you should 110% make a habit of changing your passwords for your dashboard regularly. Always choose strong passwords. Perhaps once a month, once every three months, and so on. Discussions. Before comment appears on your WordPress site, you have to check this. Comment must be manually approved by you, even if you're using a Kismet plugin. So let's go and see what else we can do. You can log into your web server, as in web hosting manager, and find the databases option. Your WordPress is residing in some database. That means you can create a new user with a new password that is strong, and then simply use that user and password to access your WordPress site database and then delete the old one. Yeah. If you were to create a new user with a new password, all you do is press MySQL databases, create a new user, new password, and then simply delete the old one. Yeah. Once you do that, then you won't be able to log into your WordPress site. What you have to then do is find file manager, press on it, and then locate wp-config.php because here you can add the new user with a new password, then your WordPress site will be back online, so to speak. But surely you do this you know, before your WordPress site breaks, but nonetheless you can. Create the user, give access, come modify this file, save it, and then delete the old one then. You can right click, edit the file, and so on. I'll show you my local copy because I'm going to show you different security methods that you can use for your WordPress site. Let's minimize this. Let's open the same file on our local computer so I can show you where you need to add that new user with that new password. Okay, so it goes in here. This is wp-config. I've named it different for this tutorial. The sample files and codes that I will show you in this video session will be available in the description of this video for you to download and use. Always choose strong passwords. Furthermore, you can grab this URL, open a new tab on your browser and simply request that URL. Grab the salt keys, copy and then change the current ones on your wp-config file and then resave this file. This should also be a regular occurrence for maintaining the security of your WordPress site. Okay, up to here, it is not to do with security, but for housekeeping. I commented things out 
so that you may use some of them if you so choose. If your website is served through HTTPS version, then definitely utilize these constants. Basically, what it's doing is it's letting the login process to be done through encryption so it's not visible to other people. If you let some other people to log into your WordPress site, perhaps subscribers and so on, and if your website is served through HTTPS, then also force that login process to be done over SSL. Let me show you the what I'm talking about. So if your website is using the HTTPS version, then simply use these directives. Now, file modifications, perhaps you may like to disable that. If you were to use this define feature that basically says, okay, you know what? People, whoever, they can't log into your dashboard and then perhaps go to appearance, editor, and then start making modifications to your files and to make sure you disallow that you simply use this but keep in mind the comments here as well because some plugins or themes or something else may require that modification to be made while it's updating perhaps a plugin if so that directive may create conflicts if so don't use it then Make sense but nonetheless but these are to do with skewering your WordPress site you should always be using the latest version of WordPress and you can make that process of update automatic you can say okay just the minor updates or major updates and so on or you can just set it to true to be updated always I would recommend this setting so let's move on, see what else we can do. .htaccess file. This will be visible, although it's a hidden file. You simply will see that file here. If you don't see it, then you need to enable uh, view hidden files, which you can do when you're pressing file manager. This .htaccess file is required by WordPress to work. By default, it'll just have one block of code. Always back up this file before you make any changes as I will show you now. I've created this file for you to consider using some of these directives. You can use this one block. You can use this one block. So basically you can copy and paste that block into .htaccess file you currently have. If any time you see 500 server errors, then simply delete what the changes you made and revert back to the default directives, which you now have in your .htaccess file. This block and this block they look very similar, but they're not. Because some server setups have different modules enabled and some of them don't. So you can, if you want, simply place both of them. Or if you know which module is enabled, then you can use either one of them. How do you find the module? You can create a new file. Test dot php create a new file grab that function where is that test file there it is edit it echo php let's echo that file as in echo that function save 
let's go and request that test dot php to see the php info here i can now search this page to see which modules are enabled then later on i can delete that file because i don't need it anymore because i know if this module is enabled you can utilize block referrer for some known user agents that are usually labeled as spam remember anytime you want to use any block from this file that i will make available in the description of this video then you can delete the ones you don't want to use and just use the ones that you want for referrer spam for user agents and also some referrers now these are the common ones that go around on internet but yours may be a little bit different or you may like to add dif different ones how can you find them you find them in your log files you simply press on logs analyze error logs analog stats and so on google analytics may show you refer a spam as well so if you want to block them you simply use these directives in dot hdxs file yeah this block is not to do with security per se but there are some website analyzers perhaps your competitors want to see and analyze your website if that's the case you simply block them with this directive here simply change this to match your own domain name because comments should only be made on your own wordpress site and not externally wordpress codex encourages you to place these directives to block access to include files for your wordpress site and place this above the default code which is automatically generated when wordpress is installed in .hdxs file if your website is served through https then you can utilize these directives use either one redirect none dub 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 to dub 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 you would use these directives if your wordpress site is served through https if not then don't use that block of code by default this is what wordpress generates in that dot hdxs file so if you run into any problems simply make sure that dot hdxs file only contains this and then save it then your wordpress will come back online if you have problems with it after you insert some of these security codes as in modules for security purposes where were we yes if it's https you use that now default i've shown you before i've added these as well so you can include this as well for securing your wordpress site at the end of the day wordpress is a great content management system but you as the website owner have to make certain changes perhaps or take precautions for better securing your wordpress site i thank you very much for learning with me and i'll talk with you in the next video session